Thank you for joining Circle Optics 360 Pulse. I am your host, Jennifer Sertle, Director of Marketing at Circle Optics. 360 degree imaging is part of everyday life and Circle Optics technology is designed to accelerate the delivery of life-saving resources, ensuring aerospace safety and enhance surveillance capabilities for protection. This podcast, 360 Pulse, is dedicated to featuring immersive technology and innovators working on these capabilities. One of the reasons Circle Optics is based in Rochester, New York, is the optics ecosystem. We have immediate access to experts and students. Since 1963, Monroe Community College has been instrumental in nurturing skilled optical technician. The college contribution to optics industry is not just local, but it's actually nationally recognized, particularly through its optics system technology program spearheaded by Alexis spielman Vogue. This program has become a cornerstone in optics education, shaping generations of professionals who drive the industry forward. We had a chance to interview Mike Pomerantz, a full-time faculty member. You will be listening to our interview. Let's start with you. Can you can you share a little bit about your technology journey in in optics and then how you ended up at MCC? Uh, my technology journey actually went backwards. Um, cause when I started Optimex, I was running the third OptiPro machine they'd ever made. Um, that was where Optimex had invested in the technology in the, nine, the late nineties. And, uh, I was doing okay at it and then not doing well at it. And I was going, trying to go to school and work too much. So I took a step back and they put me back in the conventional manufacturing portion the traditional grind and shine type stuff and from there is was where i learned all the fundamentals and then it made moving forward to the technology side easier later and uh so it was it was kind of like a like you started halfway up the mountain and like, yep, let's start back at the bottom and then work your way back up and now you know, looking back on it now all of this lab equipment now makes way more sense knowing yeah knowing back having that foundation so now, now on the education side, you know, looking at that, you know, trying to explain to the students, if you jump right into this, this high end, you know, this world of CNC and high level, high end, uh, high precision technology equipment, and you don't understand what's happening at the foundational level with the materials and the mechanics and, and the principles of fabrication, this won't make any sense. You'll struggle so much more. And you also, I try to tell them that you're also going to miss your backdoor plan. If things go bad, what can I do to, to try to save myself or save the prior or sit go or, mm-hmm. or maybe, maybe this isn't the most efficient, best way to go. Maybe I don't need that quarter million dollar piece of equipment. Maybe I can do what I need to do with something very simple. And, you know, I try to, I want them, this is actually a, a weeder whole thing, um, you know, he always like plan plan for the what if. You know, if you you have a plan, fine, go with the plan. But when when things don't go the way you planned, mm-hmm. what are you going to do next? What 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 are your other options? And that was kind of where if you don't know what else is out there, you're only going to keep beating your head against the same wall. That's that's not going to work. You have to turn uh-huh. something else. Yeah. So if so, that's why this is it is a long process of learning the old artisan ways learning the new high-tech ways, finding out what is next on the horizon for uh, equipment, technology, and design, and engineering. And then that way, they have kind of a full scope of it. And it, most of them won't appreciate it until they actually get out a workforce. Wow. Um, so I'm kind of hearing three things. I'm hearing art, I'm hearing craft, I'm hearing science. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It's. A, I mean, it's a three-point press. I mean, you, you, you do have to have an understanding of all of it. Um, it, I think that's one of the things I try to, and I don't know if it always gets through the students, but you can't just rely on the machinery. You have to understand what's happening at the, at, at the, at the intimate layer of yeah, the glass. Right. Pete, I don't know if you remember Pete Gears, uh, thing during uh, this capstone <laughs> presentation is I can picture myself at the surface of the glass and what's it, and he's right. Yeah. You, you have to, you have to understand What's happening at that at that small layer to be able to understand? Okay, now I know why the surface looks bad because of, you know you, you just start going through this checklist. Oh yeah, so if if you don't if you don't know what to look for, 
you'll just keep doing it and getting the same bad result. So you, you have to have a, yes. I think I love like so many people think that life is linear. Yeah. And I love that like you leapfrogged in in from where you were to where you are now. Oh. Yeah. And but it was Felt because first. but you, but you but you took a step back and you went back to found you know what I mean like I don't think there's enough stories about about that truth of yeah. life, you know. Yeah. Uh moving backward to leapfrog forward. Yeah, I guess. Um when uh so the reason I started teaching was that I was offered a, a chance to teach it, take over a teaching lab at the U of R. That was actually how this whole thing started. And uh, it was actually Kate, um, I feel Kate Medicus, if you remember Kate Medicus, like her, her husband, John, worked at U of R. And they're like, yeah, we have some CNC equipment. I'd like to teach you know students how to use it to make optics and measure stuff. And book okay. it. Not in my wheelhouse. It's like, I'm not a teacher. I don't have a bachelor's or a master's degree in anything. That's a bunch of experience in my two-year associates. So when I interviewed, I was like, you know, I am not the person for this job. I'll be honest with you. This is all I've got. And the chair at the time was John Lambropoulos. And he's like, you are exactly who we want. We want someone with some practical know-how and some understanding of and to be able to train. And it wasn't until I started, I had my first couple of classes of students. And, and what I did is I took a step back because I was writing training documents at Optimax for like everything, everything that I did, everything that other people did. You know, we had a whole ISO stuff going on. And, um, and what I realized is that training is teaching. It's the same thing. You're showing somebody how to do a task. You're explaining to them the why they have to do it a certain way. And then you're ensuring understanding and comprehension by having them do it in front of you. Mm -hmm. So so that 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 is teaching model, right? I'm gonna give you some information. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure you understand it and you're gonna show me proficiency in that by taking a test or doing some project or a lab or whatever it is. Yeah. So I had to like once I came to that realization, okay, so teaching training and teaching the same thing, I gotta be somewhat good at it because people that I trained fifteen years ago are still there. Uh, you know, so they're doing their own thing. They're training other people and a lot of the same methods that I was trained in, that I trained them in. And so you go, okay, so there's something to this. I get it. Um, so the difference is now eh, in a formal classroom, you have homework and you have exams and you have, you know, that type of stuff. And it's like, oh, it feels like work. But the outcome is when you get a student is like, oh, oh, I get it now. You get that light bulb moment. And, that, and that's, that's the part that feels good because I, we had a student this year and he just, attendance was bad, came, came and went, didn't do it, wasn't doing well, but had great potential. And then when he would come, he had tons and tons of questions. He's like, dude, sit in class, come to class, be attentive. You'll probably find the answers to your questions by sitting in class. Instead of sitting at home trying to self study yourself through Google, actually come where the education is and get it where it, it's what you're paying for. I was like, what do you want out of this? He's like, yeah. well, I have this project. I said, so go through the classes. That's why people seek out education because they have a vision of something that they want. Wow. So sit here, get it. And then if you still don't have the answers to your questions, then you can ask. That's, you know, it's like starting a movie. Like, what happens at the end? I don't know. It just started. <laughs> like, yeah. Just wait and see it out. I love, I love, I love the fact that I, I think perceptions of education are about you do it for a degree or the network or whatever. And the idea that you tell you actually get educated yeah, <laughs> in right. education. That's great. Yeah. How is he doing now? Oh, great. You, yeah. I, you, 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 you figure yeah. out how to get. I think it was the personalized piece, right? You you got yeah. him to see it is personal. Yeah. It isn't theory. Right. Well, and it was a, it was a two sided thing. Uh, um, um, Jen uh, Michaels was. Rick's uh, girlfriend. So he was, she was like, you know, so you know, he's really struggling. I'm like, yeah, he's doing a hard, you know, having a hard time in my class too. And so both of us were like, hey, look at, you yeah. need to like, just come to class and do the yeah. work. And uh, so it was, a, it was a concerted team effort. And, and all of a sudden it was like, hey, we had to come to Jesus. Moment. Like, look, yeah. you're paying to be here. Yeah. I was like, if you don't come, I don't care. Right. I mean, I do, but I don't because I'm not paying. Yeah. I was like, but if you fail, it's on you. And you've already failed this once before. This is the second time trying to get through the same two courses. Yeah. I was like, so you're going to repeat history here if you don't pull it together right. and stop focusing so much on 
what you think you need to learn. Yeah. You're again, you're trying to start here and you don't understand what happens at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. So it, he's, he's done well. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what is the program that you're running here? Is it part of the big, like, I, I'm, I just can Google like the thing yeah. and I see, um, you know, who's um, Spielman's sister? Alexis. 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 I see her everywhere doing all kinds of things. So she has a vision for the program at large. Yeah. Um, do you do the whole program or what is there? What is the class that you teach in particular? So, um, so from a history standpoint, so this MCC program started in like 60. Three. Oh, that's that old. Yeah, like I didn't, I didn't hear about it till Alexis. Right. So, this is this is the problem that we face, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah. So the program has been in existence sixty since sixty three. If you look at the Bob Novak Scholarship poster that's up there right now, yeah, and you look at the the, the board of successors uh, out of, out of the Novak yeah. and generation, and uh, you know it's Mandina, it's Sidor, it's uh, it's Marino, it's uh, there's Bixler. I mean, it's all these guys that are all you know prominent in the industry now. Fantastic. So what we so what Alexis came in as as a cheerleader for the, for the program and the industry was we need more awareness, you know, and we still need more awareness. You walk into Wegmans and tell someone you work in the optics industry, they assume you make contacts and. and I even today in Rochester? Oh, God, yeah. Seriously? Absolutely. It's, 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 like, it's all we're known for. Every day. Every day. We get students and teachers in here, parents like, oh, so they don't have to make eyeglasses. Oh, oh, my God. Like, I mean, there isn't anything that's from a camera that, so, to a car. There's so no that's where Alexis is great. Because yeah. she brings, she did exactly what needed to be done. Excuse me. Bring it down to something that's tangible that people can wrap their head around. It's like, you have cameras on your phone. You have backup cameras on your car. You have ring bell cameras on your house. You have, you know, think about the Da Vinci device and, you know, autonomous for, uh, remote surgery. Um, you know, even orthoscopic surgery. Uh, a lot of that, all of this exploratory medical, the Mars rover. You yeah. Know I mean, you know, you yeah. take that stuff. It's like, geez, how did those pictures get there? Well, you know, <laughs> they like, they just assume that you have a camera and bam, magically pictures appear. It's like, well, there's amazing. all this stuff that happens before that. So, anyway, so. So what she did is she she kind of came in. She she's been here seven years now. Yeah, like I missed her first year by like a year. Um, but she came in like seven years. Is like we need more awareness. We need more funds for one, um, and we need to completely revamp what we were doing. Um, so when uh, so before before I came, before I started, we had like two Optipro machines in this in this room with all the traditional fabrication machines behind it. Mm -hmm. So there was one fabrication lab. And uh, she'd approached me during a U of R industrial associates session. She, she was actually pregnant with Luke at the time. And uh, and she's like, yeah. I was teaching class. I told her what I was doing at U of R. She's like, we really need an adjunct. And I'm, well, I'm already teaching. But yeah, I was like, I can give up Optimax and come do a C thing because it was teaching. And um, so anyway, so my task was that first year that I worked for her, she said, I'm applying for a grant for the Department of Defense, Department of Energy, DPOPS uh, grant. And if you were given unlimited funds, what would you buy to bring the, the program to the next level? I was like, really? It's like, this is like an open question. It's like, yeah. It's like, give me a list of what you would, what you would need to add to that. I'm like, great. So I did it was everything you see here. I mean, I, I, I bought it, but I buy it all. But it was my so you're, this is your vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, so what I did is I looked at, wow. it, and it, what it was, it was you know looking at the industry, looking coming from home, right, coming from Optimax, and then even going into other places and go, what what are they using? What are they doing? What are they making? How are they making it? What equipment are they using? Because when a student comes out of this program, I want them to walk into their interview, and when they're doing the tour of the interview, go. I've used that. I know what that is. I know what that does. I haven't used it, but I know what it does. You, whatever, whatever the case may be, I want them to have that confidence on the interview and on the tour to where the employer says, we need to bring this one in now and get them paired with somebody and get them up to speed. And that's what I, that's what I wanted. And that's why the projects that we, we choose are simple enough in nature, but teach the concepts and the fundamentals that they're going to need to be able to then leverage that into whatever the next step so is. I love I love that you were fabricating 
glass, you are fabricating future opticians. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that, so but the end in mind was their practicality because yeah. you remember being that kid. Oh yeah, every, like every day. I think that I think that is that is the um, that message is so fundamental to success. Yeah, and in, in the the failure portion. The the oopses, you know, as it well, you know, I tell the students all the time, like, look, it's glass, it's gonna break, like, and if and if you're the reason why it broke, you better remember why and how it broke and what you did so you don't do it again, yeah. because that that's the the teetering point of learning versus not paying attention, right? It's research, it, yeah, it, it it's self research or you know self awareness of, oh right, I forgot to do this step, and that's why, so like their their projects, they take what. Like what they do in in labs, their their lab is an entire year, off well year, fifteen weeks, whole semesters worth of activities that lead up to a capstone, which is the the lens that they're making, or in the other class that I live, the two lens I live, and the 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 idea is that when you leave at the end of the semester, you leave with the entire experience. You mean it, you're not going to master it. You might be good at some parts of it. And you may have liked some of it better than others, but you will have done all the steps of the process. And at the end, you have a result to take home with you. And by the way, the report, which is 50% of their grade, is the capture of that entire experience from beginning to end right. with metrology. And then when you go to your interview and you, you know, your employer, future employer, professional employer, asks you, what did you do? To you know, it and from a manufacturer said, "What did you do in in your education?" And they say, "Well, I made the lenses that went into this, or I made this a spear, whatever it is." And you know, well, how did you do that? Well, my report. Let me say what I did. And in there, it captures equipment, setups, calculations, metrology tools, problems they had, solutions they came up with, if they wrote it right. Um, and and that's. Oh That's God. the takeaway from that is for them to be able to say, I have experience, not a lot, but I have, I have, I have awareness yeah. of these multiple steps, multifaceted manufacturing uh, approach. And this is what I learned from it. Wow. And so, so that's something, and, and I've, I've run into many students afterwards, like, yeah, hey, I still have the eye loop at work. I use it every day. And, you know, the A sphere, it just sits on their desk or whatever, yeah. but yeah. Um, but the employers like, it. you know, I've, you know, I walked multiple employers through here yeah. and, and you're like, yeah, this is great because it's practical and they get something to take out. But they have a portfolio. Well, that's just it. Right. It's yeah. kind of the first step of their professional portfolio yeah. as a fabrication tech or as a test technician. Yeah. Right? Who knows? Maybe they're going on as an engineer, yeah. but they can say as an engineer, I made this right. and I understand the manufacturing process. And now I'm in charge of how to design for manufacture later. Yeah. And and uh, that it was actually on the U of R side. That was that was my goal, having been in in fabrication, like like a manufacturing engineer, seeing designs like this is awful. Like they could have done something different to make this a lot easier to make, and they didn't know. They didn't know what it took to make. Yeah. And, uh, and even U of R students, when I bring them uh, here. Because we, we bring them here periodically for tours, and you're just, oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. So, just in terms of the name of the program that you run, just so that I have it accurate. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so this is the Optical Systems Technology Program. Okay. Um, that's how it's labeled. Uh, that's why I have Optical Systems Program. Yep. That's what it is. Yep. So, it is, it is the OST, Optical Systems Technologies. Okay. Um, and so I I manage the manufacturing and assembly labs. Okay. Um, I oversee the equipment, the adjuncts because I'm, I'm the only full time faculty of manufacturing. Yes, that's amazing. Well, let's go to the future. Looking toward the future, mm -hmm. what developments or trends in the field of precision optics do you believe will impact the um, your curriculum and the industry as a whole? So, the, I guess there's three. One immediate add is we're going to be adding coding okay um, you know since own coding to the oh wow yeah uh we already in this last grant we got we have the funding set aside for a coding chamber which people are like oh my goodness yeah um and uh besides that um um uh, obviously things to do with freeform uh virtual reality okay uh, yeah you know, the augmented reality that type of stuff 
um, because it's consumer market space. Okay. Uh, and that's where there's a lot of money being yeah. made. Yeah. And uh, that's something that is, I think, on, on the forefront of everybody's mind. Like, well, how, right. you know, where do we get generate right. more more revenue? Um, and then you know, this, the 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 area of photonics and um, the semiconductor markets because of you know the chips act being in place oh my god we're getting all kinds of pressure pressure from the doe yeah uh and obviously internals uh you know governmental internals saying well look at we can't buy this stuff from overseas right i mean we don't have the infrastructure internally to the country to be able to make at the level that the overseas marketplace did so we have to build this stuff internally Mm -hmm. um and then, yeah, and with that comes the the silicon and silica um, hybrid uh, process, microprocessors. So you have basically you have an optical um, pathway uh, to your semiconductor. So instead of electrical contacts, yeah. it's all fiber optic based. I mean, there's a lot of research done at U of R with this. Yeah, um, and you've probably seen a bunch of it through uh, Luminate. Yeah, uh, well, even what we're building like, yeah. with with our Hydra three. Yep. application and all that yeah, yeah for sure so so there's there's it's it's going to be a lot of consumer and semiconductor based okay. market push um and you know the thing is is like we are not necessarily the venue for that because you look at um corning community college or you look at rit um and uh and some of those there's some yes yeah, somebody else is looking at doing a, a photonics but you get you get Micron moving yeah. into Utica. Yeah. Um, there's uh, there's a uh, there's a pump manufacturer that's going in like the Daring Lake area that satisfies okay. semiconductor, and yeah, so there there's there's push to come back here. Well, we just we Rochester region, the Finger Lakes region's got it tagged as a as a tech hub, yeah. right? Yeah. So so there's obviously a draw. There. Well, there's money, but the know-how is different. It is. It is what it is. Okay. Okay. And right. and the, you know the the principle is is understanding having the awareness of what a micron is. Yeah. Right. You know, and being it's like, well, what happens when temperature changes? Well, microns move. Um. You know, you have cleanliness. Well, the dust in the air is bigger than the particles you're measuring. Well, it's to the tolerances you have to hold and repeatability. Oh. Being able to hold, handle, clean, deal with glass, it's not a direct skill set translation, but it gets you there. Yeah. It's a start. Right. Um, we had one student come through the program. He got his he got a certificate and then he's in the middle of I think the Atlantic Ocean laying under underwater fiber optic cable. Wow. Like he just up and just I don't know how he got in touch with these people. Just, <laughs> like, where's my caution? He's like, Oh, he's laying fiber optic cable under the ocean. He's working for Noah. <laughs> Dude, he's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, like, for it. But like we didn't do a, and we did a little bit with fiber. Yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't the main Right. You get little bits of it that, right. you know, and someone's like, where'd you get your education? Well, I mean, it's, it's proves that um, funda- like the fundamental structure of the education yeah. is different than the content. Yeah. And if you get the structure correct, yeah. you can then sure. put in all that other pieces. Yeah. That's so exciting. And then, you know, the, the, the web of contact, right? You know, we, have, we have two plus two agreements with U of R, U of A, and RIT. Yeah. Um, you know, U of R and U of A are only two four-year institutions for optics uh optics and photonics right and then rit is for imaging science so it's like right there you got the trifecta of yeah you know necessary you know carry on for education if you know students are headed in the engineering direction right that's awesome a couple things sure um what exactly is um our company doing here so uh, alan had contacted me uh inquiring about uh an optical alignment uh piece of equipment we have i can show you in the other room yeah and um because what it does is you know when you're trying to align optics to each other you have to maintain good transmission through so the equipment we had uh was actually bought year i started uh was intended for lens assembly so you take a lens line that one you put another one to it line that one to that one and it it gives you like a full stack up of all the surfaces to each other and uh, he's like, I know, I, you know, I know, uh, I know, MCC has one. He's like, would we be able to borrow it? And uh, so we talked a little bit about the, the scope of the project and what he needed. I was like, well, it'd be easier to do if we could get students involved. Um, 
but he didn't really know what was involved yet. So he didn't want to involve a student that and sit there and like, I don't know, we're trying to fight right. through the problems. So kind of let them borrow uh, some space and time on the machine and, and ultimately led to a full stack up assembly uh, with performance measurements because we had the MTF bench. So we had this great assemble and test lab, which is one of the classes we teach. And uh, and actually one of the U of R students joined uh, um, the picture space. Um, but anyway, he was working over the summer with, with Alan and, and, uh, the, and the team. And uh, he, he came here. Wow, he has so much stuff. Yeah. Um, but it, it was it allowed for that full circle of here's the prototype, here's the assembly, here's the problems we've encountered. Right. Go back to the drawing board, solve, think we solved the problems. Now test the assembled system. Not bad. Still need some work. Go back to the assembly. Right. So that we're able to kind of have this circuit of assemble, test. Evaluate. The classic plan, do, check, act. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. And it was something that it didn't have. And, and and some of Ellen's concern was like, before we commit to buy our own, yeah, we'd like to make sure that it actually does what we, what we think we want it to do. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, well, you know, it's, it's a nice proof off. Trioptics is like, yeah, absolutely. You know, we can support as much as we can. Um, and that's, uh, so that was what the connection was. You've been listening to my interview with Mike Pomerantz, full-time faculty and curriculum designer at Monroe Community College nationally recognized program, Optic Systems Technology. I just wanted to take some time to say thank you all for listening to us in 2023. And we're very excited about having even more innovators and uh, ex- exploring more immersive experiences in 2024. We hope that you will subscribe to our program, find us on LinkedIn and X, and we wish you um, the very best new year. Thank you for joining us.